Donaldson and Holly Springs and all those other battles, and he's fighting like heck trying to get to Vicksburg. Vicksburg is the key to cutting the South in half. The 53rd was with Grant that entire time. Grant could not get to Vicksburg. He kept getting stopped. What he ended up doing was he crossed the Mississippi River north of Vicksburg, went on to the west side, and then he took his whole army 25 miles south of Vicksburg, and then he crossed back over again to get back on the east side of the river. Now he's on the same side as Vicksburg. Now he's south of Vicksburg. And Vicksburg was, you know, Pemberton, General Pemberton was the general in charge of the defense of, Vic, of Vicksburg. He didn't expect that at all. All of a sudden, they lost track of Grant's army. Didn't know where he was. And then they started getting reports from uh, the local people that, hey, his whole army's on this side of the army and it's south of Vicksburg. Pemberton went into a panic. He brought all of his army outside of the city and he set up a defense south of the city. He's going to try to stop Grant before he gets to Vicksburg. Well, Grant, while he's marching toward, north toward Vicksburg, he starts drifting to the right. Pemberton's confused, so he starts shifting a little bit to the east to, to try to stay between him and his uh, Vicksburg and Grant's army. Well, by the time he realized what was happening, it was too late. What Grant was doing was he was going to Jackson, Mississippi first. Jackson, Mississippi is 40 miles east of Vicksburg, and it's the state capital of Jackson. And it was virtually unprotected. So Grant, instead of going right up to Vicksburg, he just drifted off and headed to Jackson. Besides being the state capital, Jackson was also a real important transportation hub for the South. The, all kinds of railroad lines came in there. They had all kinds of warehouses lined up along the railroads. And what they would do is they would <coughs> you know, bring in all the goods, redistribute them, and then send them out <coughs> on different trains to the different armies uh, throughout the South. Well, Grant gets there, there's a, there's a very, very small defense of Jackson. Grant Morlich knocks that right out of the way, goes into, goes into Jackson, puts the American flag up, first thing he does over the state capitol. And that was a big shot in the arm to the North, because the war hadn't been going good at all, especially out east. Uh, we were going through generals like crazy out east, and, and Lee was making everybody look bad. But now, all of a sudden, when it was, things were at their worst, we have taken a southern state capital. Not only would we take the capital, Grant took all the supplies and all the warehouses, everything he could carry and take with him. What he couldn't carry and take with him, he burned, and he destroyed. Destroyed all the railroads in the town, and then he turned and headed straight to Vicksburg. It was a 40-mile march, and he marched right along the railroad track that they used to supply and reinforce Vicksburg all the time. He tore up the tracks as he went, burned every bridge as he went. He finally got to Vicksburg on May 19, 1863. After a year of fighting and trying, he finally shows up on May 19, and Grant could not help himself, and he writes in his memoir that this was the biggest mistake he ever made as a commander. He attacked Vicksburg that day. He didn't come up with any kind of a battle plan, nothing. He just sent the troops in and started attacking. Well, it was very well fortified. I mean, they spent two years just building fortifications and reinforcing it. And a lot of boys in blue died on May 19, 1863. It was, it was pretty much a slaughter on the Union end. Um, little side note, though, it was on May 19, 1863, at that battle that Orion Howe, drummer boy from Waukegan, member of the 55th Illinois, earned his Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, he's going to be featured in one of our uh, murals in a couple of weeks, the one at Streeter Home Building and Law. Uh, that day, young Orion earned his Congressional Medal of Honor, and after the war, him and his brother ended up settling in Streeter. That's, that's a whole other hour's talk. <laughs> but, that's a little side note. That's the battle where he earned his Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, after that disaster, Grant regrouped. After he grouped on May 22nd, another full frontal assault on Vicksburg. This time, he got the same result. 
even being more organized and having a battle plan. It was so well fortified, so well reinforced, there was just no way to take it. It was just a big fortress uh, over the banks of the river. So Grant decided he was going to lay in a siege on Vicksburg. So for six weeks, the army just surrounded the city, cut them off, and just bombarded the city every day with cannons from every angle. Uh, the men of, of, of the Union Army, that was a vacation, you know, because they were hardly, you know, there were some snipers shooting at them, but there was no battles for six weeks. But we were bombarding the heck out of the city of Vicksburg. And it was a terrible, terrible thing for the civilians of Vicksburg. Uh, the civilians ran out of food within two or three days because they could not resupply the city. There was no refrigeration, so people couldn't have big words of food. Uh, all the meat was gone within two weeks. At the end of two weeks, they were starting to kill their dogs and horses. Uh, and by the end of the fourth week, those were all gone. There was no meat to be had at all. Now, the army of the Confederacy didn't have it so bad because they had stores of food for their army. But it was the civilians who took the brunt of the siege of Vicksburg. And of course, they thought Grant was an, an animal for doing that to him. Uh, Vicksburg finally fell, though, on July 4th, 1863, the day after Gettysburg victory, Vicksburg uh, surrendered the city to General Grant's army. Pemberton walked out with the white flag. And he told Grant right away, you didn't, you didn't defeat us, hunger defeated us. So whichever way you look at it, Grant took the city. Um, the men of the 53rd did not have long to celebrate, though. All the other uh, members of, most of the members of Grant's army went into the city, helped, helped with the civilians, helped feed and clothe people, and did what they could in a humanitarian way. Uh, but while all this was going on at Vicksburg, General Joe Johnston, a Confederate general in the, um, the uh, Confederate Army went back to Jackson, Mississippi, and he started rebuilding the railroads, and he started restoring the town. And Grant did not like that. He wanted that Union flag hanging above the courthouse again. So he told William Tecumseh Sherman to take his army of 20,000 men, and by the way, I'm going to give you one more brigade, and it happened to be the brigade with the 53rd Illinois, the 41st Indiana, and 3rd Ohio. Uh, uh, Lauman's Brigade, it was known as. Jacob Lauman was the Brigadier General. So he gave a Lauman's Brigade to go back to Jackson with him. So they marched back on the 5th, they marched back to retake Jackson, the Second Battle of Jackson. Well, by the time Sherman gets there, he gets there on like July 7th, July 8th. By the time he gets there, it is very well fortified, the same as Vicksburg was. They had, they had set up breastworks all around the city. They had reinforcements. And Sherman learned from Grant, you know what? I'm not going to try to take this, this town by force. We're just going to lay in a siege. Do the same thing. We're going to surround the town, and we're just going to bombard the heck out of it until they give up. It worked for Grant. Saved a lot of Union boys' lives. The 53rd Illinois was in the brigade that was on the far right of the Union line. Now Sherman had about 26,000 men. And, and Lowney's brigade was on the far right on an outside arch. Their battle line was about two and a half miles long. Now the inside arch, the defensive line of Johnson's was only about two miles long. And on their far left, uh, was the Orphan Brigade out of Paducah, Kentucky, and the Washington Light Artillery. So they are directly across the line from the 53rd. So he, on, on like the 10th, he starts his siege of Jackson, and he just bombards from sunup to sundown. That's all he does, just shooting cannon into it, sharpshooters just randomly shooting into the city, uh, just making life as miserable for the people of Jackson as they can. We don't know what happened, but Sunday, 